Hey team, Patrick here. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss some of the key elements that go into hitting our ground strokes, specifically when it comes to making topspin. We're going to discuss one of the most cliche phrases in tennis coaching, and that's swing low to high, but we're going to deep dive what it actually means. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this on the forehand, but it also holds true on the backhand. So let's get into it. So how is top spin created on our shots? Well, it's through a low to high, more vertical swing path with my strings facing forwards in the direction I want the ball to go. There's a golf coaching quote, which adapted to tennis is the strings send it and the path bends it meaning the strings control the direction of the ball and the path that I swing the racket on controls the height and the spin and the curve. Players run into problems when they either swing very straight and the ball goes into the net or they subconsciously have to open the racket face through contact as our body is very clever and it works out well we've got to get the ball over the net but this is a very difficult way to do it or they've got the racket too open to begin with and they have to roll their wrist at contact to try and square the strings up to the back of the ball which we can do occasionally but it relies on this timing and it's going to be a very inconsistent way to do it so we want a vertical to slightly closed racket face at contact, which is going to encourage us to swing up from below the ball. We don't want to develop muscle memory, for example, of using a more continental grip with an open racket face, where if I swing up with any kind of speed, I'm just going to lose the ball out the back of the court. And we're like, well, that can't be right. And we have this fear of the ball going long. So we either end up slowing our swing down or swinging very straight, which, it, which are just gonna be bad habits for us to get into. I like to say to my players, remember they're called ground strokes and not ground hits. The feeling should be that we stroke the ball and we don't hit at the ball or slap the ball. It's like you're, uh, you're stroking a dog, but I guess backwards. So maybe don't stroke a, a dog this way. A stroke is where we have a long contact zone out through the ball. And the contact zone is the length of time that the strings stay facing towards our target. We don't want to slap at the ball with a very short contact zone. And the feeling should be that we hold the ball on the strings for longer and we create this grip and this brush up the back of the ball. Now, in reality, the ball is only on our strings for a fraction of a second but it's not always about what actually happens and these thoughts and feelings that we can use to help us get better. We see all different styles from the pros, particularly with the take back, but they're all swinging up to contact on this low to high path and have a neutral to slightly closed racket face at contact. I think of somebody like Nadal, he's able to swing upwards very aggressively and the ball very rarely misses long over the baseline as he's able to control the angle of the strings at contact. The follow through can also be misleading. It is important to finish in a certain position even though the ball is gone as it does affect the swing path coming up to the ball. And if I finish up here, well, it's very unlikely that I'm gonna be swinging straight or 
down to the ball, we hope. And what you're seeing from players that have a very low follow through, for example, down here, is just being very relaxed with the wrist after the ball has gone. But they were still swinging up to the ball on a low to high path. Now, we want to use the flight of the ball as our guide. We say the, uh, the ball never lies. And we're looking for this rainbow shape up over the net, where it leaves our strings going up, reaches its apex as it crosses the net, and then curves down on the other side. And we're looking for a, a height that's about one additional net above. The net's about three to three and a half feet, and we're looking for around this height over the net. And we know we've mastered this when swinging faster doesn't just result in the ball going further, but now more speed equals more spin and more curve. Don't ask me exactly how it works. It's uh, something to do with the, uh, the air pressure over the ball as the ball rotates forwards. And the sound is also a good indicator. And what we're hearing is the strings moving up the back of the ball as we strike the ball. Now, I've been demonstrating this on the Top Spin Pro here, but I also like to do this drill, where if I pin a ball against the net tape with a neutral racket face, and this is going to represent my contact, and I swing forwards, well, you can see the ball's not going to go over the net. It's also going to be the same if I have to open a racket face. But if I have a neutral racket face and I swing upwards, you can see not only is the ball going to go over the net, but you can actually see that forwards rotation and that top spin on the ball. So if you've not got your own Top Spin Pro, this can also be a good drill to illustrate this. So we should be swinging low to high on all of our ground strokes to hit with Top Spin. And are only going to swing more level if we have a ball that is very high, above the height of the net, and we're much closer to the net. Now, how vertically we swing is going to determine how much spin. And this is going to depend on the shot we're trying to hit and our position on the court. But we should be trying to achieve top spin on all of our shots for this consistency. Right, guys, now over to you to go out and practice this. And if this video has helped, please leave it a like, subscribe to the channel for more lessons like this. And I'll see you on court in the next one. Cheers, guys.